communicable or infectious diseases and their complications cause about 130,000 deaths in the United States. A for one of every 12 deaths from any. We call these diseases communicable because unlike heart disease or diabetes, they can be communicated or transmitted to others. Caused by parasitic forms of life that are usually too small to be seen with the naked eye, they're transmitted to man by direct and sometimes by devious routes, such as animals or insects. The Communicable Disease Center, which we also call CDC, is the national agency for control of infectious diseases. We at CDC are concerned with applying or helping others apply the measures that are known to medical science for prevention and control of these diseases. We're also developing new weapons through laboratory and field research. The resulting information, methods, and materials are then relayed to state and local health departments and to others who are interested. Our primary objective at CDC is the ultimate eradication of communicable diseases. To give you a better idea of the scope of the programs, let's take a closer look at the center. In the fight against the communicable diseases, CDC is interested first and foremost in accumulating all possible knowledge about these diseases. To reach this goal, it is necessary that its scientists understand the nature of the many disease-producing organisms, how they affect the human body, and the best means to control them. This is the mission of research currently being carried out in the CDC laboratories on four groups of these organisms. One group is the fungus. For instance, research at the center has shed new light on histoplasmosis, a disease that humans contract by breathing fungus-contaminated dust. Scientists are learning more about the source of this infection and are working to improve diagnostic tests. Another group of disease-producing organisms is the virus. Research studies on polio, one of the most feared of viruses, have contributed to the development of an oral vaccine used recently to protect millions of people all over the country. The influenza virus also is under continuing research to keep vaccines up to date and to identify any new strains. A third group is the bacterium. Investigators at the center's laboratories are developing new and improved methods for detecting bacterial agents harmful to man. In addition, the laboratories serve as an international center for identifying and typing some of these agents, including tubercle bacillus, salmonella, Staphylococcus and others. The fourth group is the parasite, responsible for such diseases as schistosomiasis, trichinosis, and others. Both hemagglutination and flocculation tests are performed regularly at CDC to assist state health departments in diagnosing these diseases. Such tests indicate the presence of parasitic organisms in a patient's serum. Faster and more accurate diagnostic tests, however, are being developed, and further research is in progress on the specificity of reagents and the improvement of serologic methods. A dramatic new diagnostic procedure, the fluorescent antibody technique, has been adapted by CDC to aid in the study and identification of many disease organisms. In this procedure, suspected organisms are brought together with known antibodies which have been treated with a fluorescent dye. If the two belong together, they will unite and glow distinctly under a microscope illuminated with ultraviolet light, as illustrated by these pictures of anthrax and plague. 
The technique is also used to diagnose rabies, syphilis, streptococcal infections, and various other diseases. CDC's accumulation of knowledge about diseases extends beyond the walls of the laboratory. Knowledge is acquired through field research. For instance, the center participates in field trials of new vaccines to learn what methods of administering the measles vaccine will cause the fewest side reactions. To determine what is the smallest dose of gamma globulin necessary to protect humans against hepatitis and to find out how more people can be persuaded to immunize themselves against polio and other diseases. Through CDC's field research, scientists are gaining a broad knowledge of the insect and rodent carriers of disease. Studies are underway to determine their incidence in given areas, to locate their breeding places, and to find better ways to eliminate them with chemicals. Scientists know that some pesticides which kill insects and rodents may also harm humans. Through its toxicology program, the center evaluates many new insecticides and their possible harmful effects. Domestic and wild animals often harbor disease-producing organisms. One important field study is directed at rabies in wildlife. The knowledge gained may aid in preventing the spread of this disease to humans. Other diseases carried by animals and sometimes transmitted to man are brucellosis, leptospirosis, tularemia, and plague. These two are under continuing surveillance. The battle against communicable diseases is a worldwide cooperative undertaking. In addition to the information acquired in field and laboratory research, CDC investigators have available the accumulated store of man's knowledge on every aspect of communicable disease. It is gathered together in the center's modern specialized library, which houses more than 2,500 books and 600 domestic and foreign journals. Furthermore, the library maintains thousands of pamphlets and technical reports containing valuable information about infectious diseases. CDC is not content merely to accumulate knowledge about diseases and their control. The findings must reach everyone concerned in the health profession. This is achieved largely through programs of aid and assistance to the individual states. Important programs, for example, are those dealing with venereal disease and tuberculosis, two problems of national concern. In the venereal disease program, case finding and epidemiologic services are supported in almost every state through project grants and assignment of investigators. To aid state and local health departments in diagnosing the venereal diseases, the center has developed and standardized effective serologic tests, and it is now training laboratory workers in test performance and evaluation. In the tuberculosis program, CDC is working with state and local health departments in planning better control measures. Moreover, it is providing grants in aid for further chemotherapy research in a determined effort to rid the nation's population of this disease.